Hello again, everyone. So uh, this particular video is going to walk you folks through the third and final paper assignment for the course. So up to this point, we've done a couple of things. One is taking a, a genre such as narrative and trying to put that into a new form, a visual form, and seeing what some of the similarities or differences might be when we do something like that what some of the affordances are when we can utilize images or images in combination with other elements like music or text or uh, video, etc. The last paper was the rhetorical analysis, which I have received your final drafts, so I will be giving commentary for those throughout the week uh, and sending those back to you folks. And um, what I will say about the rhetorical analysis is it's one of the assignments that seems to be the most tricky for folks. This is the case just because though we often think and look at things from a rhetorical standpoint of, well, who's telling me this? And what is this thing trying to tell me? And how is this constructed? And how do I feel looking at this? We don't necessarily put it in the terms or the tropes that uh, rhetoric utilizes. So it's a little bit more challenging, I think, for folks. Um, this next paper, assignment number three, it's called in, an inventing arguments essay, but really that's a fancy way of saying that it is an argumentative paper or a persuasive paper, where you pick one particular side of something and argue to that particular point. So let's just look through the assignment sheet here. And I can go through some of the elements with you. Let me just drag this over here. So as it says in the syllabus, this is a slightly longer paper. So we're talking about five to six pages. And I've had a couple questions just about the page lengths and requirements. Um, again, these are road signs. These are yard sticks, right? That idea that from my area and from my expertise, this is about the length I feel that you need to write uh, it for it to do justice to what you're trying to do. If you're a little bit under, if you're a little bit over, totally fine. I'm not marking off for those things. Um, but this paper looks at something specific, right? It could be a specific product or program, a practice, a policy, some service that deals around that concept of um, you know kind of an image either directly or indirectly so some examples that i give are employers checking the facebook profiles of employees the effect of the media on body image the portrayal of college students in popular films um, something else and it could be some other kind of issue right this idea a couple of folks have, have already approached me about potential topics um, if you think of things that have been in the news or have been in the media lately what are some of those things and can you argue to one side or the other? The idea is that there's not just one side and there's never really just one side to anything, but that you can have multiple points and you can argue for or against. Uh, you interrogate some of the common positive negative perceptions surrounding that to topic, argue for how these perceptions create some sort of problem or conflict, create a thesis, and persuade others towards some type of action or change. So bring in some counter arguments. So what is that other side? And how are you going to refute that other side? Um, and again, you have the option to compose a video essay for this, which I'll go through in a second. Um, I give a little bit more uh, leeway in terms of the options of what form this takes. Because there's many ways to be argumentative. There's many ways to be persuasive. It doesn't just have to take the shape of a standard academic essay. Though if you're comfortable with that, that's fine. Um, through the course materials, through the things you folks have done in the textbook, we've looked at a lot of different things. We've looked at advertisements, we've looked at poets or speechwriters, movie directors, political cartoonists, um, and how they've utilized certain aspects of the rhetorical triangle, the ethos, logos, and pathos, used different kinds of symbols, established what the larger cultural contexts are, to make an argument towards something. It could be, again, to sell you a product or change your opinion about something. Uh, it could just be simply to entertain us. That's still a form of persuasion. But for this paper, rather than analyzing what somebody else is doing to persuade you, now it's going to be your turn. So you select a topic of your choice and present an argument or a series of arguments. 
that really attempt to persuade our attitudes or our opinions about a certain topic. The one thing I'll say is that it is easier sometimes to change people's ideas about things rather than their beliefs. So we all come from different backgrounds, we all come from different social constructions, um, and part of that is our belief structure, whether that's around uh, religion or spirituality or certain values or family dynamics, whatever it might be. And those are inherently our own and us. If we use those things, though, in certain ways to forward our certain point, we run the risk of isolating a significant portion of a population, a certain readership. So it's not so much that you need to put your beliefs or your value systems completely aside. It's that you need to be aware that those things might be a bias for you. And not to avoid them, but to acknowledge them and perhaps move past them to look at some other things where you're bringing in just evidence or testimony or something from some other source to forward the points that you're trying to make. So that's kind of the disclaimer I'll give uh, to that. Um, and again, you can set up this assignment in any one of the following ways. It could be that traditional thesis-driven essay. It could be an argumentative piece where, again, you state, okay, here's what the problem is that I'm seeing. Here's what opponents think should be done. Here's what I plan to do, and here's what that solution might be. You could do something as a letter to the editor. So you could look at Endicott's newspaper. Uh, you could look at the Boston Globe or the New York Times. See what some well-crafted letters to the editors do. And you could even do something a little more creative, like having a dialogue between you and someone that disagrees with you, so you get that back and forth. Uh, you do have freedom of format, but you need to use a minimum of three outside sources for the assignment, only one of which can be from a non-academic website. So what does a non-academic website mean? It means, um, you know, you type something into Google and say CNN appears or something, right? CNN or BBC or Fox or whatever can be viable sources in certain ways, um, but they're not academic. Okay, They're not coming from journals or databases that are associated with the library. So that's what we want you to start looking towards. So consider those scholarly peer-reviewed journals or books, magazines, documentaries, um, other possible sources. Here are the things to consider. Who is your intended audience? Right, You're writing this for me, sure, for a grade. Okay? And you've got your classmates that potentially will know what your topic is uh, based upon some of the discussion board questions that we have. Um, but if you were to try to convince somebody of something, would you convince somebody that is already really set in their ways about what you're talking about um, on either side of that spectrum, for or against? Are you trying to hit people in the middle? And if so, who are those people? Um, what is the primary way you, you want to appeal to your audience? So you're going to draw upon the testimony of experts, ethos. Will you try to get the audience to feel a certain way? Are you going to incite them to some sort of action through anger or through tugging at their heartstrings? What is it? Will you utilize various types of evidence from very different sources to present your argument? And that one probably should be the strongest of all the elements. You can do a little bit of relying on all of these to get your point across, but again, you're practicing academic prose, academic writing, the integration of sources with your own thoughts and ideas, and that's pretty much what you're going to have to do uh, at a college level writing. So you want to make sure that you have enough of that present. And then what are the counter arguments? Viewpoints other than your own regarding the chosen topic. How are you going to address those, refute, or disprove them? So that is that standard option. Uh, the video option, it has to have a small written component to it because this is a college writing seminar, so I want to make sure you folks are doing some of the traditional alphabetic writing as well. Um, but there's all different things that you can do, right? A, a film or an animated short, uh, a series of television commercials for a made-up product when you're trying to be persuasive, um, a PSA for some political or social issue, uh, news broadcast, a scene from Make Believe Reality Show, some other creative way, perhaps, uh, that has to have my approval. For the written component to that, you need to justify, okay, what is it that you did and, and why? Um, why did you choose this format? So a commercial versus something else. Um, what were you trying to do in terms of getting an audience to feel a certain kind of way, etc.? And most of the questions are listed out there to think about if you choose that option. Again, could be MLA. It also could be APA format. Again, go with what's within your chosen major. First draft is going to be due this Friday. Final draft isn't going to be due until uh, after the break, after Thanksgiving, so you get a little bit of leeway time there and get to take a bit of a breath. 
So we've got that. Um, but I'm going to be posting a couple other videos, one on library searches and another one on something called the Tolman model, which is something that can be very beneficial in terms of setting up how you're going to be arguing for something. And um, I'll be posting those from a previous English 101 course that I had taught uh, a semester before, but I think they're still applicable for what you folks are trying to do here. But if there's any questions on those videos or any of the other videos, please feel free to contact me and let me know, folks. Okay? I look forward to seeing your work. Thank you.